Chętnie zaczniemy. Hello, hello. Hejka, hejka Łukaszu, cześć. Czyli rozumiem, że widać i słychać, czy tylko widać? Proszę nam tutaj słychać tylko. O, bo może Joanna ogląda nas na komórce i może dlatego. Dobrze, ale rozumiem, że mnie słychać. Dobrze, to w takim razie przejdźmy do rzeczy. Ja się nazywam Natalia Soszyńska i witam Was na naszym webinarze British School, kolejnym webinarze. Jest to webinar serii, witajcie słychać, dzięki Aleksandra. Jest to webinar z serii Practical English i celem naszych webinarów jest, super, dzięki, celem naszych webinarów jest przybliżyć Wam pewne zagadnienia z języka angielskiego. No i oczywiście rozkochać Was w tym języku, tak jak my go tutaj bardzo wszyscy kochamy. A ja w British Cover jestem metodykiem i ze swoim przecudownym i przyspaniałym zespołem e, tworzymy to miejsce. No i też celem naszych webinarów jest to, żeby Państwu, żeby się z Wami troszeczkę bliżej poznać, bo nie wszyscy, nie wszyscy się znamy. Tutaj niektórych widzę naszych już studentów, ale nie wszyscy są naszymi słuchaczami, także Także jest to też naszym tutaj zamiarem, żeby, żebyście mogli nas troszeczkę poznać bliżej. No i tak, ze mną dzisiaj jest, kto czytał tutaj opis, o czym będzie webinar, kto będzie prowadził, jest ze mną Marko, za chwilę się Wam tutaj pokażę. Marko to jest nasz native speaking English teacher, który dzisiaj poopowiada Wam i przybliży temat false friends. Hmm, ciekawe, co to jest, prawda? Czy to co to są to friends and false friends. Dobra, no to już nie będę dalej przedłużała. Marko zaraz tutaj wskakuje do Was i zaczynamy. Także bawcie się dobrze. Have fun. My name is Marco. I'm from Australia and we normally say good day. So I should say good day or good evening to everybody who's joined us. Uh, it's fantastic. I can see Agnieszka, Alexandra, Joanna, uh, Natalia's joined us as well, and Mukash. So a very warm welcome. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining this webinar. Also, hello to anybody who is watching this webinar in the future on video. We'll be sharing this uh, later for, for you people. Okay, so what are we talking about? Yes, we're definitely going to be talking about false friends, and we'll also be talking about homonyms, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. The, um, the thing we're doing though is a webinar. Webinars are fantastic for you because you can be at home, uh, especially on a, a very cold day like today in Warszawa and a wet day, uh, you can be at home and having an English class. So that's fantastic. But the problem for me is I can't see you and I can't hear you. So please uh, chat with me online and uh, participate as much as you can. This is an English class in a way, and the, the more you practice, the more you participate, uh, the more chance there is to learn something and also have some fun. So look forward to your participation. Okay, so what are we doing today? Essentially, I'm keen for you to be better understood, meaning that uh, if you're communicating with somebody, whether you're writing to them, whether you're speaking with them, that they understand you as well as possible. And uh, also I'm keen for you, if you're reading something, to understand what you're reading. So today I'm going to focus on, or tonight, let's say, I'm going to focus on some special words in English, some words that may be a little bit tricky because they maybe look the same or they sound the same, but they have a different meaning. So that's the plan. So if you're sick of uh, you know, not being understood, if you have problems being understood, hopefully this may help you a little way. So let's continue, have a look at the agenda. Um, it's, it looks rather big, but it's rather simple. There's two parts to the agenda. We have the homonyms, so words that have different meanings, but either uh, look, they are the same in terms of spelling, or they have the same sound. Um, so we've got homographs. Homographs, if you think of the word graph, a graph is something that you see. So think of uh, when you look at a word, you'll see the spelling. So the spelling will be the same, but the sound will either be the same or different but the meaning will be different. So we'll look at those words. We'll also look at homophones. So if you think of phones, you probably think of like headphones. You may think of the phone when you're speaking with somebody. So words that have the same sound, 
but uh, maybe a different spelling, definitely a different spelling and a different meaning. So we'll look at those. And finally, these false friends. These are two words that you think in Polish and English are the same. Nam uh, televizor. Okay, televizor, television, quite easy. But these are two words that look the same, but they actually have different meanings. And we can get in a bit of trouble playing with those words. So let's get onto the topic. There'll be a little bit of theory. There'll be a bit of practice as well and uh, plenty of fun. So let's begin. We're going to start with the homographs. Here's the first word. The word is pole. Okay, a pole. What is a pole? So a pole can be a long stick and uh, you can see them on the streets, for example, if you walk around Anin or other places where you have electricity, the electricity wires are connected by poles, essentially. So we call this an electricity pole. Um, sometimes if you're making a fence, you may have some poles uh, as well being used. So we see poles around, uh, around us. We also have the poles, if you look at a map of the world or think of the world, you have the North Pole, the South Pole, basically the ends of the Earth. Uh, so we can also refer, refer to them as poles. And finally, Polish people. Yes, my wife is a Pole. Yeah, so anybody from Poland, we can call a, a, a Pole. Yeah. So same, same pronunciation, same spelling, but different meanings. This is one example. So let's continue. To lie. Okay, so you're lying in bed. So what are you doing? Yeah, you're probably you know, horizontal on top of something and your body is flat. You can say you're lying down, you're lying in bed. But also if somebody's lying, yeah? to lie, basically, you're not telling the truth. Uh, we know some people, they like to lie about their age. Now, if you lie about your age, for some people, this is a serious lie, but for many people, it's what we call a white lie, a white lie. I'm not sure if you've heard of a white lie before. And, um, but these are kind of little lies. You don't mean to hurt somebody. Uh, maybe you want to, um, yeah, it's not really to tell a big lie, we can say that. So this is lie. What else do we have? We have fair, something is fair. Okay, something's fair, something's reasonable. We want things to be equal for people. Life isn't always fair, we can say that. Yeah? Life isn't always fair. Uh, a fair can also be a large event. Uh, I think it's targi in uh, Polish, basically, where you have buyers and sellers coming together and trying to sell something. Okay, so this is a fair. And also, fair can be something quite large. For example, today, in fact, uh, we had a fair amount of rain in Warszawa. We can say that a fair amount, yeah? There's a fair amount of people who have joined us tonight, which I'm really happy about. So we've got six or seven or so, um, a fair amount. So there's some different usages of fair. We've also got lean. Now, I hope you're paying attention because we will have a look at these words and I'll see if you've uh, 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 captured all the meanings. Um, if you lean, for example, if I lean on this chair yeah, or lean back, I'm basically moving my body uh, one direction in a particular direction. So I'm leaning back, I'm leaning forward, basically moving my body. And things can lean as well, and we'll have a look at that. Meat could be lean. Basically, if you find some lean meat, we're basically talking about some meat without any fat. Yeah, some, uh, so something's very lean. This is a lean piece of meat. I would like a lean piece of meat, please. A steak, for example. Um, the person will understand what you mean. And the other one, is a, for people working in organizations, if you hear that an organization is lean, we're basically talking about an organization that doesn't have so many resources. They're trying to run the business very tightly with the minimal amount of people and the minimal amount of resources, small office spaces, small amount of team. It's a lean organization. There's not a lot of fat. It's quite similar to the previous meaning, but we're now using this word in, in, um, in business English, we can say. Okay, let's move on to sign something. I'm sure you've signed many documents uh, in your life, especially if you're Polish and you have dealings with the government, like I did today, to sign, to get something uh, uh, delivered. Um, and also the other thing, road signs, yeah? So different types of signs that tell you not to smoke, uh, tell you um, other things, just give you some information or direction. So we have that, that's a, a little bit more simple. And the last, I think it's the last word I'm gonna share in this series, it's the word cool. Here we've got four different uh, meanings here of the word cool, and they, they're slightly different. So the first one, so it's slightly cold, fine. It's cool outside. 
certainly today it was rather cool, um, fairly cool, I would say, meaning uh, to a large degree, using that word before. Um, so it was cool outside, slightly cold. It's not you know, really cold, but quite cool. So we can say that uh, autumn in Poland is rather cool, yeah, rather than cold. Cool can be kind of fashionable or attractive. Yeah. Hey, there's some cool sunglasses. That's a cool jacket. Hey, they're really cool shoes. I like that. Um, that's a cool building. I like the look of that building. So we can use cool in that sense. And some people also like to use the word cool instead of great or very good or excellent. Um, how was your English class? It was cool. How was your, um, I don't know, how was the party? How was the restaurant? It was cool. It was excellent. It was great. So this is a nice word, very informal, of course, um, but commonly used, especially in countries like Australia, where I'm from. We like this word. And the last one is a little bit different. So if somebody's a bit cool towards you, yeah, um, how was it, you know, you met somebody for the first time and you ask, you know, what are they like? And they say, well, they were a bit cool towards me. Why were they cool towards you? What does that mean? It means they're a little bit unfriendly. Um, maybe, I don't know. Uh, for some reason they just didn't like you or let's say for example uh, you went for a job and you got the job and and this person didn't get the job they may be a little bit cool towards you because they're a little bit upset so there's another different meaning of the word cool okay now it's time to uh to use these words and some are easy and some are maybe a little bit more tricky what i'd like you to do is let's start with this uh, the top left corner i'm going to just little circle here and if you could just describe what you see, basically, and ideally, I want to see, of course, we want to use these words that uh, we've just covered. So we're going to go rather quickly. So if you can just type, how would you describe this picture in the top left corner? Nice one, uh, Ludwig. Lovely. Cool cat. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Any, any other, of course, we've kind of, uh, how else could we describe this cat? Yeah, look, I think, uh, you know, really, Ludwig, I, I, it was basically what I was looking for, a cool cat. Um, so certainly it's a cool cat. It's wearing sunglasses. It's chilled. Cats are very cool. I have a cat. And um, but also a cool cat. You can also describe somebody as a cool cat. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's used mainly in, let's say, England and uh, also in Australia. It's a little bit old fashioned. It's slang. It's informal. But hey, she's a cool cat. He's a cool cat. Yeah, so just the way they behave, their attitude, something like that. Okay, that's a good start. What about the second one here in the middle and the top? Using one of the words that we had before as a clue. Maybe you visited this specific building. It is a sketch, so it's gone very quiet on the chat. Um, I'm wondering what's happening. I hope people can hear me, still following. Okay, we've got a leaning tower, a couple of leaning towers. Yes, absolutely. So we're using this word lean. Um, and it's a leaning tower of what? Uh, yes, thank you, in pizza or pizza. No, it's not pizza, of course, but it is in Italy. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not Italian. Um, either pizza, pizza, something like that. So leaning tower in pizza, of, of pizza, super. This next one, it's actually from my country where I was born where I lived for many years. What do we have here? Rather easy, I think, but it is a very special one of these. What do people think? Okay. A sign, yes, it's a sign, nice. Of course, what kind of sign? <laughs> this was one of the easy ones, so. Okay. Yes, yeah, a road sign, thank you, uh, Nat. Um, and it's a very special road sign because when people think of Australia, they think of dangerous animals and uh, some of them are here. So uh, you'll be able to see a snake and a spider and a shark and a crocodile and a scary box fish, amongst other things. So, yes, uh, funny signs. Definitely. You'll see plenty of those in Australia. Okay. Bottom right hand corner. Maybe a little bit trickier, this one. Uh, I'm not sure if actually culturally in Poland, this has the same meaning as in, for example, in Australia. So we've got a person, this in this case, a man with the one hand behind his back and his fingers are crossed. So I guess, you know, you know, normally we say cross your fingers. Yeah. I hope everything will be okay. You know, in Poland, Chemam Chuki, you know, using English, crossing my fingers. 
but in this case, the man's got it behind his back. So what's actually happening in this case? Yes, thank you very much, Agnieszka. Yes, we've got a liar. Yeah, so if somebody's doing that, they're generally not speaking the truth. Um, you know, if they put your hand, I promise to do it. You know, like a child would often do this. Um, the, the teacher or parent says, will you do your homework? Yes, I promise to do it, hands behind their back. And then they'll later say, no, but I, you know, I had my hand behind my back and I crossed my fingers. So this is a liar. Absolutely. Um, good question, liar. I think the spelling, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm an English teacher, I should know these things. So a liar, if I'm correct, and you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, because it, it has happened before uh, while I'm teaching. A liar is spelled L-I-A-R. So, yep, super. Um, smiley faces, I'm happy as well. And so let's move on. This one's, again, also a little bit abstract. Thanks, Wukash, for the confirmation. Um, what, have we got, what, have, what do we have here? Two fish bowls and two fish. Uh, they're goldfish, kind of orangey. One's big, one's small in different containers. So what, what's the situation? What's happening here? It's a bit what? Is it cool? I don't know. I don't think it's cool. Maybe cool for the small fish. What do people think? This one and the next one are maybe the two toughest ones. I'm not sure. Silence. What does that mean? That um, your fingers are cold? I'm not sure. So think if you're the big fish and you look at this small fish, and the small fish has a big tank and, a, and the big fish has a small tank, the big fish probably thinks what? It's a bit what? And it's, I'll give you a clue just to start. It's a bit un something. I did promise that you'd have to do some work. Okay, another clue. Bit un something. Thank you very much, Nat. Nice. Unfair. I like it. It is unfair. Why did that fish get the big bowl? Okay, so reduce fair. And that's, you know, it's not equal in the sense, not reasonable if you're a big fish to be in a small bowl. What about the last one? What do we have here? Anybody who loves Olympics uh, will probably know this one. If you're into athletics, uh, you'll know this one. It is using one of the words uh, that I introduced earlier. So we have, so we're jumping over something and we're using something to jump over something. And it has two words. Yes, we've got half of half of the answer there. So it's pole something. Absolutely. So we're using a pole. So the person is holding onto a pole. It's pole jump is pretty close. I like that one. So this is a special kind of jumping activity. Um, when we use a pole or stick or something to help us or our hands to help us get over something, it has another word. I'll give you a clue. Start here. Paul V something. I don't know if you know this word. It is a, a verb, and, but in this case, it's a, an activity. Name of an activity. So, thank you very much, Ludwig. Yes, chocolate for you. If I had one, I'd deliver it right now. Um, pole vault. Yeah, so to vault over something is to kind of jump over it, either using your hands. Um, in gymnastics, actually, there's the vault. And um, also in this case with the pole, yeah, so we're using a flexible pole, some kind of, um, and I'm not sure what type of material, but it's another usage of the word. Let's move on, if you agree. I agree. Let's see if I can change the page here. All right, now we're going to look at some homographs. So they're still the same word, same spelling, but in this case we have a different sound. So it gets a little bit more complicated now. The first word, L-I-V-E. Okay, so we've got two meanings here. One is to be alive, which is a nice feeling, and to have life. Okay, so I hope to what? To I something to 100. How are you going to say it? I hope I to 100? I hope I live to 100. Fine. What about if you're watching something on TV? What about if you're listening to this broadcast right now? This broadcast, this webinar is to live on t on tv or live on your uh, phone or your screen no it's live on tv yeah so it's a little bit different this match is live you're watching this live now um via the internet thank you very much internet um so i hope to live to 100 and you're watching a match 
live on TV. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure. I guess everyone's at different levels. Some people will know stuff, some won't. Um, even if it's revision, I hope it helps. Let's move on. Okay, lock on. What happened here? Name spelling. Okay, this one. B O W. B O W. So we've got two meanings again. Uh, if I'm doing this thing where I'm bending my head or bending my body forward, yes, I'm meeting. Yeah, let's say I'm in Japan, people, what do they do? B-O-W, they bow a lot, yeah, to bow. Um, some people may be in front of a royal person, a king or a queen may bow. They may curtsy uh, if they're a female, but some kind of bowing movement, yes, moving forward to bow. Now, what about if uh, you've got these two curved parts and two loose ends? Um, a nice way to think about it, oh, actually, I don't, I don't have the shoes. Um, so if you have a shoe with laces and you tie a what? Do you tie a bow, this special knot, or do you tie a bow? Yeah, so it's a bow. We're tying something. So in this case, sometimes you may see gentlemen, guys, men. Um, they may have a tie or they may have this one Yeah, with this kind of nice pattern. Uh, it's a bow tie, not a bow tie, a bow tie. So the same spelling, different meanings, different pronunciation. Okay, I'm still with you. I'm still uh, live here, I hope. Next one, B A W -S, S. Now, music lovers will know what this is. Uh, often uh, on your stereo, you'll have volume, you'll have treble, and then you'll have this thing. You know, that's that low sound. So if you like techno music, some drum and this, it's basically those um, deep sounds you'll hear at a party. If you live above... Uh, um, place that's having a party, you'll hear this do, 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 the deep sound. This is bass, bass, which is kind of weird, yes, because it, it doesn't, you think of bass, B-A-S-E, uh, the uh, military bass in Poland, for example, it's a different spelling. So here we've got bass, but the sound that comes from music, yeah, that low, deep sound, bass. Well, what about some fish who live uh, in rivers and sea? Uh, I was recently in Croatia and I was uh, had the pleasure to eat some of these fishes. I'm sorry for that. But um, it's not sea bass, it's sea bass. So sea bass. And also for geography lovers, um, in Australia, we have the mainland, the main part of the, the country. And we have this little island called Tasmania. In between Australia and Tasmania, we have the Bass Strait. I don't know if it's because we have a lot of sea bass there, but... I think it's actually uh, from the some explorer or something. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. Anyway, it's bass straight. So we've got bass and bass. Okay, let's move on. What about this word? C L O S E. I think this one's easy for people. Yes. Uh, please close the door. Close the door. Yes. Or close the window. It's cold. Absolutely. What about if you have a relation with someone and you're you're like this? Yes. You're as we say. We don't say very close. Very close. Yeah. This is my close friend. This is not my close friend. This is my close friend. Yeah, so we've got a slightly different uh, pronunciation going on there. And this one, for good measure, uh, I think you can, you've recognized this word, of course, P-O-L-I-S-H. Now, if you you know, you take it now, for these shoes, yes, I was doing it earlier to do this thing. What am I doing? I am polishing to polish my shoes, yes, to polish the table, polish my computer, whatever you want to do, rub something to clean it, make it shine, make it look good. Okay, that's fine to polish. Now, are you a polished person? Maybe some people say that, I'm not sure. I th and I'm, I'm guessing in your studies, I hope in your studies that you've been told that you are a Polish person. Yes, I'm Polish. Thank you very much, Polish, Polish. Yes, so it may sound a bit weird to hear I'm a Polish person. I'm a Polish person, slightly different. All right, so. What's happening here? Um, I, yes, I just, sorry, I just had a quick look at chat. And uh, last Sunday, uh, Wukash uh, must have been near a party, the neighbors having a party and, and he didn't appreciate their base. All right. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever had to test whether a microphone or something's working. And uh, certainly in Australia, we always say testing, testing, one, two, three, just making sure the microphone works. Now I wanna make sure you're listening well. I'm gonna say a word. And uh, what I'd like you to do is to write down 
the first word that comes to your mind. For example, here, yes, if I say the word English, um, probably, definitely, or it should happen that you will think immediately of British school bothered, for example, yes, when you think of English. Oh, okay. Or the weather, yes. The English, you think of rain. Good example. Thank you, Mukash. <laughs> Super. All right. What else? What about if I say Polish? Say the word Polish. What's the first word that comes to your mind? Word association. This isn't a psychological test either. It's more a listening test. Yes. Okay. Yes, Polish shoes. Lovely. Let's get some other examples. I really wish I could send chocolates for the most creative uh, effort. So, but polishing shoes is important in Poland, I know. Okay. What else can you polish? The main thing you, as you're hearing that I'm saying polish and not polish. Okay. Polish nails. Nice one. Yes. To polish your nails. Lovely. Yes. Polish furniture. Super. Okay. <coughs> polish a car. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you can take your car to get a wash and polish. Absolutely. My brother's doing that a lot. Actually, no, he's doing it himself. He likes to polish his car. So it looks good. Super. If there's any other questions, please ask them. Yes. By type. Okay. I'll keep moving to the next word. Um, polish. What have we got? Moving on. Yes. Base. 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 Let's see if you can get creative. Yes, those neighbors of mine, perfect. And I'm just going to be a bit funny for a moment. Um, yes, a bass singer, super, yeah? Somebody's a bass singer. If you have a choir, uh, and this is a weird uh, word, actually, because it kind of, you see this word, C-H-O-I-R, and it, does it, you know, how do you pronounce it? It's choir. So you'll have some, maybe some bass singers in a choir. Um, okay. And a specific, I, I assume this is a specific uh, uh, singer, I hope. I don't know it. So sorry, Agnieszka. Um, if you could enlighten me, um, share some more information uh, based on the surname. It's kind of got a little bit of an Italian, but... This year, I'm not sure. Basement for Metallica. Okay, interesting. Cool. Um, ah, yes, I was also thinking about it. when you say bass man, uh, Agnieszka, do you mean uh, singing or playing some instrument? Because often when we think about bands and we think of someone's, a bit, yeah, playing, yeah, so pa playing the bass guitar normally. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So we've got a Metallica fan, I assume, or someone who at least knows uh, some music history. Uh, what else? And bass. Yes, yeah, so I wrote first bass. So different spelling, the different word, but just for your information, I'm not sure if you know, but if you get to often, if you start dating with somebody, um, and I know guys often they want to get to first base, yeah, where you've sort of started your closer relation, let's say, with uh, your partner. So there's another phrase for you to get to first base. Have you got to first base yet? That's basically what somebody means. But let's focus on this class today. Uh, what about bow? Bow. What comes to mind if I say the word bow? I'm quiet. What are we talking about? Yeah, it's not quite the okay. Yes, okay. We've got the bow to the queen. Maybe yes, if you're polite and it's kind of custom, we can say. Um, yeah. So bow and bow. So bow tie, bow, bow in front of somebody, bow forward, and uh, so that's the difference there. Bend the knees. Bend the knees. To bow. Bend the knees. What does that mean? If you bend the knees to okay, so leaning forward or leaning our head. Uh, I'm not sure. Quite sure. Wukash. Um, certainly, I know. Like uh, so, for example, for women, uh, when they meet the queen, they have to 
sort of do this fancy curtsy where they bend the knee and do that. So I'm not sure if you're kind of having that uh, in mind. But Game of Thrones, I have no idea. I know the show, seen a few scenes. Sorry, I don't know what it's about. Um, but um, hopefully there's some bowing going on there. <laughs> okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Agnieszka. It's helpful for me because, um, yeah. All right. I'm going to try to get this back on track. And uh, what about um, live? Live. Live to 100. Nice live webinar. Thank you, Agnieszka. I feel better. All right. So, yes, live. This is live. Absolutely. We're not living, live live. And the last one, close. 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 Close, close, close. The, okay. Close friends, thank you. I was going to say this section is coming close to an end. Yes. So soon to an end. Um, actually, this is a different meaning. Close to an end. Uh, soon to an end. Close, close, close. Close. <laughs> okay, it's coming. Yes, to close. Uh, I live nearby. I'm close. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm near something. I'm close to it. I'm close to a person. I'm close to a place. I'm close to the end of this section. This is the meaning I live nearby. Super. Let's move on. Okay, enough on, on homographs, I think. What's on the next page? Homophones. Super. These are fun. Homophones. Yeah, so words that sound the same or very similar and have a different spelling in this case. Okay, this is the one I really like the most. Uh, one is a place where there's a lot of sand, it's dry. There's very few plants in Australia. We have a lot of uh, a lot of Australia is basically this kind of thing. How would you say the first one? Desert sounds good to me. If you said desert, yeah, most of Australia is desert. Super, yeah. Uh, I think even in Poland there's a desert. I believe it's small. Um, I know there's a lot of sand, but certainly there's an area that they call a desert. If I'm right, let me know if I'm wrong. But the other thing is the thing that we eat normally at the end of a meal it tastes sweet. Um, something I love, and a uh, thank you, Ludwig. Super, when uh, must be the name of the desert. Um, the other thing we eat is what? Is it a desert? Would you like some desert uh, with your uh, meal? No, you would like some dessert. Absolutely. So most of Australia is not dessert. Um, it is deserted, but that's a different word. Um, but uh, it's a desert. Most of Australia is a desert, but we normally like to eat dessert at the end of the meal. All right. What about this one? In this case, the uh, the words are basically the same in, in pronunciation, minor. But they're kind of interesting, yes? The first one is a, a person who's working on or in a mine, essentially. And I know there's lots of mines, these places where we have big trucks, uh, and uh, take minerals out of the earth, uh, whether it's salt, a uh, big one in uh, uh, Vialichka, yes, Vialichka salt mine, and lots of coal mines down south in Shlonsk, I believe. And um, so miners, people who work in a mine. But a miner is also a young person, a person who doesn't have like, legal responsibility to be an adult, to make kind of big decisions. And um, so it's actually illegal to sell cigarettes, for example, to miners. Now, of course, miners working in a mine, taking out minerals, you know, it's, it's cool for them to smoke. Often they do, weirdly. But, um, but if it's a miner, a young person, so we need, you know, kind of a, a different example to the other one. The other one, desert, dessert. Here we have the same spelling, but quite different meanings. All right. Uh, sorry, different spellings, different meanings, same pronunciation. It does get a bit confusing. Okay, this one I know English teachers like because it's, you know, it's, um, I don't know. Why do they like it? Really interesting question. But affect and affect. 
pretty much you can't really hear the difference yeah it's the effect of something the effect of something um but one is actually a noun and one is a verb yeah so okay the result of an influence yes the effect of something the result of something the outcome of something the cold weather had no effect on my mood yeah i'm still happy to be here even though it's really cold it's actually warm in here so that's fine but the effect yeah what was the effect did it have a good effect but to affect something as a verb yes you have an influence on something so the cold weather negatively affected my mood the effect the affect yeah sound exactly the same similar but so the type of word in this case will give you the clue so if you read something um you'll know okay if it's acting as a verb it's generally going to be affect uh, meaning the influence or the other if it's e um the noun or the e and if you're writing yeah so you just kind of if, uh, knowing whether you're talking about the affect of something um, or the effect. Okay, so we'll come back to these to see if you've got the, the idea. This one I do like a lot um, because it also sounds the same. Compliment, compliment. It's almost impossible to hear the difference. I don't think. It, and when I checked online, it says that you pronounce it the same way. So we've got an I and an E. If you compliment somebody to compliment them, yes, because they have a cool jacket, yes, cool jacket. Um, so you compliment them. You did a very nice job. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. I compliment you on your efforts. Um, but something complements well with something else. Yes, that jacket complements well with those shoes. Yeah, they go together very, very well. So the beer is a good complement uh, to pizza. We can say that they go together very well. Uh, what else goes well? Anyway, stuff that goes well together, they complement each other. They're not saying that you're good. They're not praising each other, but they go well together. So this is complement and complement. We have principle and principle. Also the same pronunciation, different spellings. Okay, so the basic idea of something, the rule of something explains how things work. The principle is this. Yeah, the principle behind this word is that blah, blah, blah. The principle behind our approach, our policy is this, that we believe in fairness, yeah, using the fair word. Okay, but the principle um, is the first in, in order of importance. Yeah, the, the, the principal reason for this meeting or the principal reason for this webinar is to help you improve your English. The main reason, the principal reason. Um, so the principal aim of this meeting. Uh, different meaning, same pronunciation, and but different spellings. A couple more, I think. These ones are cool. Okay, something is deliberate or you deliberate. Yeah, so if something's deliberate, I did this deliberately. I deliberately chose this word deliberate because I like it. You do something intentionally, it's planned. It was a deliberate lie, yeah? it was on purpose. I'm really sorry, but it was deliberate. I didn't want you to know something, so I deliberately lied. It's a white lie, it's a small lie, but it's a deliberate lie. If you deliberate, what does that mean? You think seriously, mm, you know, you talk seriously about something, you consider something deeply, carefully, yeah? Um, she's deliberating whether to quit her job yeah um i yeah you know to, to think deeply about something so deliberate deliberate slightly different and uh this one's fantastic a <sighs> conscience conscious okay so which one's which i'll test you in a moment yeah but your conscience tells you whether something's right or wrong essentially your conscience how you feel yeah was it a good thing to do or a bad thing to do? If you have a guilty conscience, that basically means you kind of know it wasn't right to do something. For example, my wife um, knows that I love cake. And so when she eats the last piece, she often, she enjoys it, of course, but she has a guilty conscience uh, because of it. Because she knows, you know, it was for me and she should have not have eaten it. But um, to be conscious of something is when you're aware of something, you know it exists okay so i'm conscious that you can hear me and see me i'm sorry about that but um but i can't hear you i'm conscious of that i'm aware yeah so it's, it's um so they're similar sounding conscience conscious very different meanings all right so that one's repeated here's the test a uh, simple test a listening test again on the left hand side I have something on the right hand side yes oh what am i doing Okay, uh, so tell me whether it's left or right if I say dessert. 
left or right, dessert? Is the thing on the left or the thing on the right? What do you think? And it's cool to be wrong as well, you know, because you're just having a go. So I really appreciate that. Let's be quick. Left or right, dessert. Okay, I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe everybody's uh, keyboards crashed. It's very quiet, too much talking. What have we got? Or is it just too tricky? That was quite easy. Dessert. Dessert. Have a go. You can only be either be right or wrong. It's a 50% chance. So. Hello, hello. What's happened? Okay. What about if I say desert, which is the other one? So what's that one? Desert. Desert. Is that left or right? Desert. I thought this would be easy. Sometimes you never know as a teacher. Okay, please. Hello, hello. Uh, okay, so I started by saying dessert, which is one of either on the left or right, and the other one is desert. Yeah. So I like to eat desert. No, I like to eat dessert which is what i was saying the first time yeah so okay you don't understand the question i'm really sorry so we've got two pictures here um that's my apologies one on the left hand side is a picture of a uh, place with lots of sand and um ah uh, so, okay so i think we've got a problem i've just found out we've got a problem because you're not seeing what i'm seeing oh, that's that's a pity okay something's happened yeah okay I'm very okay. Something's happened with the um, screen. Okay, now I believe it's okay now. Uh, if I understand, you should now be seeing some pictures. I'm just trying to check on another screen here. I was wondering what was happening. Okay. So, yeah, so what you've got on the left, I was saying uh, is something either a dessert or desert. Which one's which? Now, okay, super. On, all right, so if I say dessert, is it the thing on the left or is it the thing on the right? That was the whole exercise. Apologies, because I'm seeing something else here. Okay, thank you very much. It is the thing on the right. Thanks for the big, yep, super. Yeah, dessert, and the other thing is a desert. What about on the bottom? We've got the, the two C words. If I say the word conscious, is it left or right? Conscious. Conscious. Left or right? Conscious. conscious. Yeah, it is. Thanks, Agnieszka. It is the one on the right. Yeah, conscious. On the left, conscience. Conscience. Con conscience. But it kind of it, it looks like conscience, but we say con conscience. Okay, that was that exercise. Here's a slightly, I think it's harder one. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. Okay, now you can see the left and right. This is what I was seeing, uh, that you were seeing, but I wasn't. Anyway, so ignore the L and the R's. I can see that now. Um, but basically, do you think, I'm gonna make it slightly easier. I'm gonna go to this one. Basically, you have to fill in the gaps. You've got one to five, and uh, I've given you some clues on the right-hand side, you've got A, B, C, D, E. So for question one, we need to something for longer before making a decision. What do you think? We need to, uh, we need to principle, we need to complement, we need to conscience, we need to affect, we need to deliberate. What do you think? Thank you, Agnieszka. Yes, top of the class. E, we need to deliberate. We need to think longer before making a decision. Okay, number two, it's, uh, well done, Joanna. Uh, it's not an easy decision. What does your something say? What does your principle say? What does your compliment say? What does your conscience, conscience say? What does your effect say? What does your deliberate? Okay, it's getting easier. We know it's not bad to say. Bravo for the C's. Yes, super. Agnieszka is very much on it. And uh, what does your conscience say? You know, your feeling, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, what does that say? We often talk about it. What does your conscience say? You know, should you do it? Okay, I made the decision based on a matter of what do you think? On a matter of principle, on a matter of compliment, on a matter of conscience, on a matter of effect or deliberate. I made a decision based on a matter of
made the decision based on a matter of just checking that screen. It's gone quiet again. Thanks, Wukash. Yes, A, based on a matter of principle. Yeah, based on um because I believe that it's a matter of principle. Um, yes, A, I actually didn't really talk specifically about this meaning of principle because it talks about the main idea. So the principle of something. So I, I based my decision on that. Okay, finally, oh no, two more. So hopefully the something of this decision will be positive. I guess it's either the complement of this decision or the effect of this decision. Hopefully it's pretty clear now. You can be quick so we can move on. I'll be happy. Hopefully the something of this decision will be positive. We've made the decision, we've used our conscience and uh, based on some principle, and now we hope the something of this decision will be not the affect, but the um, thanks, Agnieszka. The D, yes, the effect of something, the result of the outcome of the decision will be positive. Super, thanks, Ioana. And finally, I would like to, I'm going to say it, of course, compliment you on your excellent decision. I'd like to compliment you on your answers and let's move on, I think. Yeah. The final section. We're getting close to the end, close. False friends, Natalia mentioned this earlier. Um, so these words we think that are the same when we think about Polish and English, but they're actually different. Uh, they have a different meaning. So it's a little bit tricky, these things, um, because we enjoy it when it's the same. It makes learning easier when we uh, find out it's the same thing, but um, unfortunately, it's not always the case. And this one's really cool. Uh, uh, I actually spoke with Natalia about this before. It, it, and um, aktualne, okay, it sounds the same, looks the same as actual, something's actual, but something's aktualne. Something's aktualne, Popolsku. Um, I've been told, wiem, że to znaczy, że to jest current, yes, current, current Popolsku with a Polish accent, current. Um, yeah, so it's kind of now, yes, to jest aktualne. Ale actual is. Okay, it's something more, it exists in fact. Um, this is actual, uh, actual, I don't know, just I don't and my Polish isn't good enough to understand it, but I hope you can kind of feel the difference, yes? Um, uh, actual, I'm trying to think, I can't think of an example, you know? Or maybe it's too late in the day or something like that, but um, okay, this is current, this is the uh, current information. The actual information, actual, uh, the actual, actual topic is what's the topic the actual topic is this it's not the current topic it's the real topic something is real in fact something like that slightly different so just be careful if you say um here's the um current current news the actual news it is kind of real existing fact maybe but it's slight we actually say current rather than actual so that's the difference even for me it's quite hard to explain but hopefully it makes sense actual the actual fact and it's an actual fact the actual fact is this, actual, yeah, the actual fact, nice. Even the current fact kind of sounds a bit weird because it sounds like the, current, the facts change, so they do sometimes. But thank you, uh, Joanna. All right, this one I like. Um, brat, yes, I have a brat, a younger brat. Um, and in English, we say brat, yeah? Okay, so we say brat. It's a completely word, of course, yeah? So brat is brother, uh, but a brat? We wouldn't want to say he's my or this person's a brat. Um, no, it's a badly behaving child, essentially. I don't know if bakor, that's the word I found, uh, uh, if that's a, uh, a good word, if it, it makes it clear for you. But um, often we say a spoiled brat, yeah, a spoiled brat. Um, that they don't appreciate things. Um, they have a life too easy and they're a bit nasty or whatever badly behaving child is a spoiled brat but a brat is you know child not behaving very well what else do we have uh the next one eventual yeah and eventually sound very similar tosh yes the no i don't know i don't know how you use it in polish i'm really sorry but eventual yeah alternatively some yeah something a bit different but eventually is eventually yeah, in the end consul uh so again slightly different meaning yes this one just to make things a little bit lighter. Yes, fart for old school. I believe it means luck. Uh, to have some fart. Do you say that? To have some luck. Um, and uh, I'm going to come back to your question, Ioana. Um, and fart, yes. Okay, we try to avoid doing this. It's embarrassing if you do it. Uh, I don't know if Pierre 
Goa is the right word, but um, yeah. So um, wish you, I wish you fart. I wish you, no, we don't say I wish you fart here. I wish you wouldn't fart. Yes, we would say that, um, but let's move on. There was a question, spoiled or spoiled? Uh, I believe, and I, you know, I'm an English teacher. I should know things 100%, but often there is cases, yes. Um, something's um, learned, for example, I learned something or something is learned. Yeah. Um, there's a few of these cases. I'm not going to go into grammar. I'm not a very good grammar teacher, I must say. We have excellent teachers here at British School Bubbard, um, who have, you know, can cover all these uh, grammar topics. But um, uh, generally speaking, my understanding, if we're talking with the, the T at the end, it's more kind of British style English. And it's certainly what we use in Australia as well. Um, but I can't remember the grammar class when we talked about that. Let's move on. Hopefully your screen matches mine. Oh, I love this one. Sympatechne. Someone is sympatechne. You see, you hear it so often in, in Poland. Poles are sympatechne. Yes, Poles, using that word from earlier. Nice. They're nice people. Absolutely. In English, if we say somebody's sympathetic, it's a, it is a different meaning, I would say. Of course, if somebody's sympathetic, they are nice in a way. But if we use this word in English, we do mean that they're more very understanding. They're very caring. I hope this... Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to try to say it'll sound terrible, but I'll give it a go. Um, spultuyance. This spultuyance. Hopefully that's the right word for it. That's the word I found. But of course that means nice in a way, but it's slightly different. So we, we don't use this word as often. Somebody's sympathetic. We would say somebody's nice, um, the way you would say sympathetic, but sympathetic, they, you know, they're deeply understanding. They feel for you. I feel for you. I, you know, I really care for you. What else do we have? This one's nice. You all went to gymnasium. Maybe you have children in gymnasium, middle school. Uh, gymnasium is actually a different kind of place. It's a large hall for exercise, essentially, to go to a gymnasium. You do gymnastics, for example, um, sala Um Of course, in English, we actually normally say gym. I'm going to the gym, a place to exercise. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at the gym tonight, meet you at the gym. Um, so we, we don't have this word for middle school is essentially middle school. It's not gymnasium, gymnasium in, uh, in English. So maybe that's new for you. What about this one? Something is ordenarne. I believe it's rude or vulgar. Yeah, that was rather ordenarne. That was rather rude, I believe. Yes, so that's rather ordinary. That's rather normal. That's rather average, rather zvekwe. Uh, so I don't know if you've got those confused before. They're very similar looking words, similar sounding, but completely different meanings. Yeah, so um, be careful using those. Here's your chance now. What do you think? These are some are easy, maybe one or two are difficult. Um, fill in the blanks. Let's start with the first one. Chef and chef. It's, they sound exactly the same. Yeah. Here's the chef. Here's the chef. Uh, I'd like you to meet the chef. Okay. So what does that mean? Who are you meeting? I think everyone knows this one. You want to type person chef chef sometimes the chef could be a chef certainly i certainly know yes yeah, chef is boss absolutely chef is boss and uh a chef even though it's spelled ch we pronounce it chef sometimes english is tough hey like c-h-o-i-r choir choice the church choir English. Um, so chef is a boss, but what is a chef in English? A chef. A chef. I don't think this is new. I'm sure you have it on TV. Master. Yes, people are typing now. I can see it. Yes. The, well, yes. Chief cook. Absolutely. Chief cook. I like that. The, <laughs> yes. Boss versus uh, cook. Absolutely. Yeah. So the cook, the chef, it may be the boss of the restaurant, but generally speaking, they're quite different people. Yes. So I'd like you to meet the chef. Uh, it's typically going to be the cook rather than the boss. All right, the next one. I don't know if you know this one. Certainly, I think you know what a cask is and uh, when you use it. Is it. I'm saying it's not the same thing as a cask. So what is a cask? Now, so, you know, I, I believe everybody's Polish. So you know what a cask is. I assume there's one meaning. So I assume it's this thing you put on your head. That's, that's my understanding, yes? Um, in English, do you know what it's called? What's that called? That thing you put on your head? It's not a cask, basically. So that's there's a clue for you. Yes, thanks, uh, Iwana. It's a helmet. Yes. Um, 
So a cask, what's a cask then in English? We don't say it's a cart. What is a cask? I don't know if you know this word. It's not that often used, I have to say. Um, when I was growing up, here's a clue. It was, uh, well, not when I was, I wasn't drinking this stuff but um, my parents were, and they would buy wine from a cask. It was called a wine cask. So it wasn't uh, from a bottle, it was a different kind of container. So essentially a cask, I, I don't see anybody writing. So a cask equals some kind of container. Um, just writing it here. Yes, is that right, uh, Bechulka? So I think that's right. Uh, kind of container, yeah, holding some liquid, maybe wine, uh, maybe water, so a cask. So that's something different. So just being careful, yeah? So do you have your cask with you if you're riding the bike? No, I, um, but I do have my helmet. Finally, the last one, lunatic. I love this one. Um, do you describe someone as a lunatic in, or a lunatic in Australia? It's quite different to a lunatic in Poland, I believe, yeah? Is anybody a lunatic in Polish, yes? <laughs> okay, leave this writing. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, a lunatic for post school. So it's the sleepwalker. Yeah, somebody who doesn't realize that they walk when they're sleeping. Yes. Um, now, basically, a lunatic in, in English is not a sleepwalker. So uh, if somebody says I'm a lunatic, they don't mean I'm a sleepwalker. I was, yes. Yeah, so somebody was a, lun a, a lunatic uh, when they were younger. And often people don't know, but they're told by their parents, their partner. But a lunatic, what are we talking about? Somebody's a lunatic. And you can use it slightly different ways, actually, but it's, it's definitely not a sleepwalker. I'm a lunatic. He's a lunatic. He's just what? He's a sleepwalker? Absolutely not. He's just. Now, if the person gets the first person gets this, gets one of these beautiful. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. British school. Well, it's not. It's like a fudge, I think. Well, I don't know what you call them, actually. It's not chocolate, but it's a sweet. You see them everywhere. But these are the best ones you will ever taste, I'm sure. Um, so one of these will, I don't know, we'll get it to you somehow. Or please come and um, see Natalia myself. And actually now we've, we've, the next, we've got two now. What's a lunatic? Somebody's a lunatic. Have you heard this word? I need to wrap things up. I just realized the time. Oh, okay. Seems I'm going to eat these sweets. A lunatic, somebody, somebody crazy. Thanks for being, absolutely. Somebody's crazy. They're a lunatic. He's, He's a lunatic. He's absolutely crazy. Be careful, this guy. He's a lunatic. He's crazy. Yeah. Maybe he sleepwalks, but normally sleepwalking, you don't control it. You don't mean it. It's, you know, it's um, something else. But somebody's crazy. Somebody's a lunatic. So, um, are you a lunatic? If you ask somebody, are you a lunatic? Then they'll probably just think it's a weird question. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to hit the next page. I don't know what you're going to see now because uh, I'm just checking the screen. What have we got? Yes, that's the end. That's all. Now I say for now, why do I say for now? Because I've only shared some homonyms, some homophones, some homographs. There's many, there's many to learn. Um, even for me, some were surprising when I was doing some research. I know even for Natalia here and for the teachers who are you know, really masters of the English language. Sometimes, you know, there may be something new to learn. To be honest, I'm learning things, uh, new things all the time. So I, all I wanna say is thank you very, very, very much for joining this webinar. Um, been fun for me i hope it's been fun for you i do say happy studying because the studying never ends and uh, enjoy hope to see you here in anin at the school on the streets i'm a local and um maybe for another webinar sometime so i'm gonna invite natalia back just to to wrap it up and some nice words in polish i think and uh some formal stuff so, uh, uh, uh um, Oh, I was going to say school class, not quite, yes. but you know, for being involved, come and enjoy some of these next time you're here and I uh, hope to see you soon. And thanks for the thanks messages as well. <laughs> tak jest, zapraszamy na krótki, to na pewno, do kawki. Już się niedługo skończą, bo tyle chętnych jest na te krótki. Dziękujemy bardzo. Mam tutaj, tutaj ułożyłam piękne te zdania dla Marko. Tutaj zobaczymy, czy dobrze słucham. So we would like to compliment you. For, for your great live webinar and hope it will bring effect in your life, guys. <laughs> and you won't, you won't put a cask on your head. And if somebody will call you a lunatic, you will know what they mean. <laughs> and we would like to wish you luck, definitely.
not the second word. Yes. <laughs> not for. <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> yeah. Dobrze, czyli tak jak jeszcze raz zapraszamy na kuweczki. Dziękujemy bardzo Marko i dzięki Wam za przybycie, za tak, za współpracę, za udział, za to, że byliście tak zaangażowani i aktywni. Ja się tutaj bardzo fajnie bawiłam i naprawdę się uśmiałam, musiałam się cicho śmiać, bo żeby mnie nie było za bardzo słychać, także, także naprawdę poczucie humoru Marko nie zawsze tutaj <śmiech> rozwala. Dobra, słuchajcie, mam do Was takie pytanie jeszcze, może byście napisali swoje jeszcze sugestie, jeżeli macie jakieś szybko w głowie. Co byście chcieli jeszcze usłyszeć? Marko jeszcze tutaj się zgodził jedno, jeden webinar poprowadzić dla nas. Także słuchajcie, musimy jakieś tutaj fajne sugestie zaproponować. Może co, co Was tutaj bardzo nutrzy, jeśli chodzi o język angielski. Takie pytania, które tylko Native'owi możemy za zadać. Proszę tutaj, jeżeli coś Wam przyjdzie szybciutko do głowy, to proszę mi napisać w czacie. Jeżeli nie, no to oczywiście coś swojego zaproponujemy. Natomiast fajnie by było usłyszeć Wasze głosy i Wasze sugestie. W międzyczasie oczywiście, jeżeli chcecie więcej popróbować swoją wiedzę angielskiego. Zapraszam tutaj <głos> na naszą stronę. Można zrobić sobie jeszcze raz nasz te teścik. E, I co? No i e, dzięk dziękuję Ci wszyscy. <głos> ja też dziękuję w swoim imieniu. No dobra, czy jeszcze będziemy tutaj minutka, myślę, że dwie. Jeżeli, e, jeżeli przyjdzie Wam do głowy jakiś pomysł, a co byście chcieli usłyszeć na następnym webinarze, który tak myślę odbędzie się za, za miesiąc. Proszę śledzić naszego Facebooka, British School Waver, my się tam nazywamy I, i, i też otwierać maile od nas, bo na pewno będziemy mailowo informować Was o kolejnym webinarze. How to speak with Australian accent. Ok. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Dobra, no to już, już tak, już mamy jeden coś, może o akcentach, zobaczymy. E, może jeszcze ktoś tutaj coś zaproponuje. Mm. Dobra, to słuchajcie, czyli tak jak powiedziałam, zapraszamy po, do polekowania nas na, na Facebooku, to jest najprostszy sposób, żeby się dowiadywać o takich webinarach. Na pewno wracamy już tak po letniej przerwie i one będą organizowany co miesiąc, konkretna data będzie podawana na naszym facebookowym fanpage'u British School Warszawa Waver i oczywiście wysyłamy do Was maile, także otwierajcie je, sprawdzajcie, rejestrujcie się i zaglądajcie tutaj do nas. Oczywiście zapraszamy też i na żywo, offline'owo na, na te króweczki. <grych> Dobra, to dziękujemy Państwu bardzo za udział i do zobaczenia online i offline. Bye bye.